Again, thank you for joining us. I want to welcome the amazing Bryn Tillman as our influencer guest this morning. If you've been around the sales world, mm -hmm. especially as it relates to social selling and digital selling, you couldn't help but run across Bryn Tillman mm -hmm. in, in one way or another with the books she's written, with the events she's done, with the organizations she's supported, and the events over years and years. She is one of the most accomplished sales leaders, presenters, teachers, and coaches in the industry today. Thank so you. I am humbled to have you with us today, Bryn, to Go talk ahead. about this and, 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 you know, and really elaborate with respect to all your extensive knowledge and experience on how to use social media, digital sales, digital marketing, and of course, most importantly, LinkedIn, in a manner by which people can really drive revenues, sales, networking, the corporate image, and all of those things that create the things that we need to do as a business.
to grow and prosper. So with that, and, and, and just quickly, I'll say, introduce myself. I'm Thomas Ross. I am the director of sales AI for Workplace AI with Soar Inc. Um, and I have been in the uh, sales training, sales enablement, and digital transformation industry for about uh, 20 years now. So I'm well familiar with it. And I used to see Bryn everywhere. And I always took the opportunity to listen in to whatever she had to say. So it's just such an honor to have you here again today, Bryn. And please, let's start and, and hear the, uh, the, the areas that you want to focus on in talking about how LinkedIn can be a, a key to starting conversations. Yeah, I mean, this is huge. And I thank you so much. And I'm humbled by your introduction, for sure. And I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and, you know, what we're talking about is what everyone in sales is trying really hard to do, which is I'm on LinkedIn, I'm doing all these things, but I'm not getting those sales conversations. Right. And that's the goal. Right. Especially, you know, if we are spending our valuable time, wherever that is, we need an ROI. We need to make sure that what we are doing is productive. It's, it's the right activities at the right time with the right people. And so we're really going to talk about today, how do you position yourself to actually do that, right? So I am Bryn Tillman, and if you enjoy this, I have free resources at uh, socialsaleslink.com slash library. And by the way, if you're a bank, themodernbanker.com slash public library. But ultimately, this today is about starting those conversations. So what does that look like? Well, you could ask 100 LinkedIn trainers their definition of social selling, and you'll have 101 answers. But this is really where we've brought this down to exactly what we believe the mindset should be when you are going to market on LinkedIn as a social seller. So it should be focused on building rapport, providing real value, developing trust and credibility by being a resource, understanding that the sales will come when the time is right. It is so important that we come at this from that perspective. So here's what we typically hear from sales. I have thousands of connections, but no conversations. And in some cases, salespeople may have thousands of connections and they have no idea even who they are, let alone have conversations with them. So we're going to change that today. When I ask for conversations from prospects, I get ghosted. You know, this is something that happens because... Well, we'll go in what's broken, but th this is a typical, I had tried LinkedIn for sales, but no one returns my messages. No one engages. So we're going to talk today about how to do that right. I share content, yet no one is engaging on my content. And everyone says I need to use LinkedIn for sales, but I can't figure out how to do it right. Well, here's what's broken. First, our profiles are self-centered versus value-centric. And we're going to touch on how do we transform that profile so that it's value or client centric. Here is the number one broken thing from sales is the connect and pitch, which, by the way, is a bait and switch. So I'm curious if you have been a victim of connect and pitch, put a V in chat. So if you are live, you can look at comments the bottom in comments, put a V if you have been a victim of connect and pitch. And my guess is there are going to be dozens of you, whether you actually put the V in or not, that have been that victim. I don't know anyone on LinkedIn that has not had this happen to them. So listen to my words, right? We feel like this happens to us, that we are victims of this. We don't want to be the victimizers. Yet, as salespeople, we want to go out and pitch all day long because we have this great product or solution that we have that we want the whole world to know about, but they don't care yet. And we're going to fix that. Connect and forget. 
everyone is guilty. Everyone is guilty of connect and forget. Even I am, and I know what I'm doing. But we have to reduce this. Connect and forget. It's like we go out to a networking meeting and we walk around and collect business cards and then stick a big rubber band around them and stick them in the corner of our desk. That's what we're doing with our connections. Those are not turning into conversations and neither are our connections. So we've got to take them out, take the rubber band off and take a little inventory of who are our connections that we should be talking to. Another one is random acts of social. Uh, and this, I would say a good number of people, they just don't have a plan. They they jump into LinkedIn, they like some things, they respond to some people, they ask some folks to connect or they accept some connection requests, but there's no plan or methodology. And random acts of social gets you random acts of sales. It's just the way that it is in any process, right? We need to have a process in place. Post and ghost, we put out content and we do nothing with it. Two people engage and we get one comment and it's done. We need to proactively get our content in front of our targeted audience. The more we do that, the more engagement we get, and then it builds on itself. And next, this is really a, a, a challenge for salespeople since typically they're just sharing marketing content. And marketing often will write content about all the things we want our prospects to know. But if they are not actively looking for our solution, it typically won't start a conversation. So we need to start sharing content around what they want to consume, right? The goal of this is to start a conversation, not to make a sale. Recognize that is the goal. The sale will come when the time is right. And not leveraging referrals and permission to name drop. This is the number one thing that we need to do as salespeople is leverage our relationships and we're just not. So this is also kind of our agenda today. So before I keep going, uh, Thomas, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, you know, there's so much you can add to that. I mean, right from the get-go with respect to um, the, the bait and switch that you mentioned, that is a common malady that's, that's, that's not addressed enough. Uh, for many reasons, many of which center around how people were trained or not trained in the first place, um, and they don't know any better. So they don't realize what they're doing, and the impact they're having is actually negative, both to them as well as the organization they may be representing, because people are going to stay away from them rather than connect with them. So the whole point of connecting, as you're going to get into, is to create a relationship not to suddenly trip somebody on the sidewalk so you can help them back up. So, <laughs> But those are all excellent um, examples of the areas that people need to focus on. So please continue to <laughs> continue to show people what they can do better and why. All right. Well, terrific. Thank you so much for that. So, um, you know, there is, uh, I guess, a... Um, tendency for us as salespeople to go out and just share all the great things that we do. And especially when we love what we do, we want everyone to know about it. When we believe in what we do, we want everyone to know about it. But when we lead with our solution, we help company, we help companies or clients just like you, or um, we can 10 times your, you know, at 10 X, your whatever, or, you know, here are the five reasons customers buy from us. We actually repel our prospects who are not actively seeking our solution. So if someone is looking for your solution, that may work, but think of the thousands, the tens of thousands of people that don't know they need you yet. They're not actively seeking you yet. If you lead with your solution, they keep moving on because they're like, ah, I don't care. But when we lead with, when we lead to our solution, so that's leading with our solution. When we lead with our solution, 
We're saying, this is what we do. This is who we help. When we lead to our solution, we're bringing value and insights and education and thought leadership that gets them thinking a little bit differently. And we'll kind of jump into that um, formula in a little while. But the bottom line is we need to lead to our solution, not with our solution. If I said that backwards, that, I apologize. That, is that more of a pull rather than push process, would you say? Brent? So I, I think it's an attraction process, right? It's about attracting them. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with David Newman, who wrote a ton of books on uh, marketing and, and public speaking. But one of the things that he talks about that I think is completely genius is we need to start engaging our buyers at the stage before they know they need us. Right. Right. Genius. Right. What are they doing? What are they searching? What are they finding um, on the Internet? What are they consuming before they need us? This is huge because that's where we want to capture them in social selling and digital selling and marketing. We mm -hmm. want to be the one that's influencing them at the right time so that they're not even shopping anyone else. So this starts with our profile and we need to shift our profile from a resume to a resource. I know that LinkedIn absolutely uh, pushes our profile like a resume, but this is not what our buyers care about. They don't care about how many years we've been in business as a salesperson. They don't care. They don't care if we won President's Club. They don't care. In fact, it will hurt us if we talk about what great negotiators we are, because on a resume, we might want that if we're looking for a sales job, but our customers certainly don't want to read that or you know see that about you. That will repel them. So we really want to start by changing this profile into a resource. So I'm going to quickly go through, I mean, this could be five hours in and of itself, just going through the details of the profile. But generally, instead of your profile being account manager at ABC company, what if we talk about who we help and how we help them and the results that we bring and what we do? So I invite you to take a look at my profile, Bryn Tillman, I'm still the only one on LinkedIn. And you can see this is more about really bringing them in right? If they immediately see, we help sales professionals. How do we help them? Increase their sales opportunities through LinkedIn and AI. And then the results we bring are trust-based conversations without being salesy and then sales navigator and AI prompt training or whatever that might be, right? And now you get someone that shows up at your profile and they're like, oh, they work with people like me and this is interesting. And I'm earning the right to get them to want to continue to read my profile. Next is your about section. And, and I'd love to hear if you guys in chat, if your about section is your mission, your passion, your years in business, put in, um, what should we say? Put an A for about section in your profile, in your in, in the comments. So put an A if my about section is all about me and then put an exclamation point if your about section is all about how you help them because that's what they care about. This is what helps us convert those connections to conversations. We earn the right to get the conversation through value. So if you have the old way of your about section, put an A. If you have a new, uh, really resource-driven, put an exclamation point in the comments. So what could this look like? And this is not the only way, by the way, but this is a way that we know attracts, teaches, and engages our buyers. So what is the challenge they're facing, right? This is ultimately what we are going to start to see uh, resonate, right? This is my challenge, right? So for us, it might be, you know, 
um, sales professionals are you know, struggle to get on a, a a conversation with prospects with a high level of credibility. Then what are your insights? Teach them something. Now, here's a trick. Most of us want to tell them how we can do that right now, and that becomes the pitch. I want you to reframe it. And by the way, you can start with, here are the three to five things that we do that are differentiator and have an impact, and then reframe it from, we help people do this, so people should consider this or here are the top things that these people, sales professionals in our case, need to do in order to be successful. That's what will lead to your solution, not with it. If we're leading, once we've done that, now one line of how we can help. So if you're exploring this, love to talk to you a little bit. Because this is what, these are the results you can get. Social proof can be a quote from a client. Um, don't fall into the marketing of 10X. Don't fall, like make this authentic, like you'd have a conversation with someone versus this being marketing. Because this should represent the words that would literally come out of your mouth in a meeting. And then a call to action, make it easy for them to reach out. Your email, your phone number, your calendar link right in your about section. Anything you want to add, Thomas, before I continue on? Well, yeah, I would just add that um, being personal and representing yourself and, and, and saying these things by way of how you laid it out there in a way that differentiates you from everybody else as a, as a person is really important. Again, I think what people are really not wanting to see and read is a CV. They don't want this to be a resume. They wanna know who you are. And this is your opportunity to do that in a very professional way. So I think that's excellent, Bryn. All right, fabulous. Thank you so much, Thomas. I love your input there. Um, so services, this is in beta. This is, Assuming LinkedIn keeps it, because sometimes when things are in beta, they go away. I think this is one of the most incredible new features, and very few people are leveraging it. So this is the area where you get to share your solutions. It's searchable, and people can request your services. So if you were going to add this to your profile, if you go to add profile sections, it's the third one down. That says services, you can choose up to 10 categories, a description, but ultimately what happens is everywhere that you go, meaning on LinkedIn, so you share content, you're commenting whenever they see your name, there's a hyperlink that says request services, and it's on your profile as well. And if you look in the search in LinkedIn, so if you go into LinkedIn and you click your your mouse in the search bar and hit enter, you get all these filters. One of them is search services. I have now gotten three pieces of business. I've probably had 25 or 30 requests for services. Three of them have converted. One of them was a wonderful keynote in Atlantic City that they never would have found me without this feature filled out because this is what they, they, they were looking for what I do in LinkedIn and my name came up and they literally clicked through to request services and I was able to quote it and I closed it in about 48 hours. So this is really important. I'm not gonna go any deeper into this now. It will walk you through what to do, but please, if you are in sales, make sure you are taking advantage of services. And then your experience. 2,000 characters, make this about your story and how you help clients. I would not necessarily start with my mission or my passion, although you can definitely get this in here. Often I talk about, this is your why statement, why you do what you do. Why did you pick this? Why do you, what is it that you love about your solution? This is the opportunity to emotionally connect and talk about how you help your clients. And then about the company, and then what you sell. 
right before we go into nurturing I our just, I would just add something there if I could. Um, Absolutely. That is a cut and paste area for most people. The point or the area that you just went by, that being the experience. So often it's a cut and paste right from a resume. Um, and that's a mistake, right? You know, one of the things that, that I tell people uh, in the very process uh, that we're going through is tell them what was the most amazing thing that you accomplished at that company, at that company or in your company, in your role, by way of what you do and why that was important by way of what you bring and why you can do even more of that in lieu of the folks that are searching you up on LinkedIn, right? And, and the value that you want to provide. So make it something interesting. Bring up a story that you, um, that you were part of or that you, that you uh, got success with and have some fun with that as, as opposed to that cut and dry point by point, did this the, on, you know, at 9 a.m., did this at 10 a.m. and so on which is what most people do with this cut and paste area. Don't do that. Make it more and more about you. Thank you. That is so important. So now that we've got this foundation down, right? So we've got the, the our profile done. The next thing we want to do is nurture our existing network. This is the connect and forget. We need to take inventory and we'll talk about this. So your existing network that are your first degree connections. At least that's the way I talk about it. Some people will say your network is your first, second, and thirds. Your network, in my opinion, are firsts. This is a two-way street. You can't have a one-way first degree connection. So either they asked you to connect and you said yes, or you asked them to connect and they said yes. The second degrees are the friends of your friends, the network of your network. These are the two major areas where we play. I think thirds are generally cold. We do have some ideas around it, but I would not put any energy around thirds. I would spend most of my time in my firsts and seconds. So let's talk about engaging those firsts. Who have we been ignoring, right? So we want to export our connections to identify who we've been ignoring. This we can actually, and these are the steps. You can certainly screenshot this. Um, or you can reach out to me. We have lots of tutorials on this in our, our free library. Um, but ultimately, we want to export our connections. Once we do that, we get a um, Excel or CSV file that we can open up in Excel or Google Sheets. And it gives you first name, last name. Emails are random based on who's allowed that because um, it's a setting, company name, position, and the date we connected. Now, we recommend that you have a column where we take inventory, clients, prospects, referral partners. So we go through this, and about 10% of our connections are people that we should be having conversations with that we've been ignoring, and we want to change that. And we'll talk about what to do in just a minute once we've identified these folks. But I think that it's really important that we know who we're connected to. And by the way, I need a new screenshot of this because about six months ago, there's a new column that's added, which is their LinkedIn URL. So when you export this, there's a link that when you click on it, it'll go right to their profile. So you, it makes it really simple to vet them. Go, wait, I think I know who this is. But you're going to be shocked at what you see. You're going to see people that you know really well that are at new companies and you missed that they changed that job. You're going to see new people um, in your network, maybe that got promotions that are people we should be talking to. There's so much that we can get from just taking inventory. We can also search our connections. And I think this is one of the most powerful features for any link, for any sales uh, prospecting tool is the ability to see who your connections are by filters, titles, keywords, locations, relationships. So you can put in first and you can put in second degree connections when we're mapping this out. So we're talking about taking inventory of our first degree connections. We may want to find, you know, everyone in the U.S. or every wherever you are or wherever you sell could be global 
in whatever industry you're selling to. And you can put in, in title, you could say, I want the CEOs, I want the CFOs, I want the CROs. And all of this is available in the free LinkedIn. Most people don't recognize there's a lot for free. And this is one of them. So one, I, I still recommend that you export all your connections. But some of the gold here, really, when it comes down to it, is being able to quickly filter to identify maybe you have 3,000 connections. Who are the 300 people that I should be talking to? And this makes it really simple to do. So now we've recognized we have 300 people. We want to go ring their bell. If we've identified people that we want to engage, first degree connections, there is a bell at the bottom right of, the, your, of their banner, their background banner. There's a little bell. And you have three choices. You can get notified on everything they post, the relevant things, or none. And so I mostly say relevant. But now I don't spend any more time in my newsfeed. I'm in my notifications now, engaging with that 300, right? The people that we've identified that we want to have conversations with, we now want to engage with on their, their content. So maybe of the 300, 50 of them are sharing content. This gives us an opportunity to uh, engage in a way that matters to them and restart a conversation authentically and kind of naturally. Now there's lots of other things we can do, but I do recommend, if, especially if you don't have Sales Navigator and sales, if you have Sales Navigator, you can save these and uh, that content will be available on the homepage of Sales Navigator. But in the free LinkedIn, we have the ability to ring the bell and get notified in our notifications when they're sharing content. That, triggers us to engage. We can also, in the free LinkedIn, search what companies we already have a first degree connection in. This is something that very few people even know exists, and it's a game changer. So if you go in and you click, you know, you put your cursor in the search bar and you hit enter, and you go into all filters coming from the drop down, it'll probably default to posts or people, choose companies. You'll be able to choose company size, industry, location. And then at the very bottom, there's a first degree connection. So if you have 3,000 connections on LinkedIn, there's a good chance you've got at least 2,500 companies represented in those 3,000. You, you'll have some duplicates, more than one person in a company. Now we can drill down to which companies of the maybe that 2,500, maybe there are 80 companies that meet our criteria where we already have a connection. And so we can reach out to them and there's lots of different ways to do this. But, you know, we these are our first degree connections and we just want to learn a little bit more. I have some clients that have had great success reaching out to their first degree connection they're not necessarily the buyer, right? But, you know, hi, you know I could go, hi, Thomas, um, your company has been assigned to me by, uh, you know, by by my manager. And I, I noticed, you know, you've been there for the last three years. I'm wondering if you'd be open to a quick five minute call where I can ask you just a couple of questions to understand kind of the culture in your organization. It's already a first degree connection, right? And then you build the right rapport you could get some internal introductions. Anything you want to add to that, Thomas? No, I think I think that's fabulous. Are you talking a little bit more uh, later with respect to uh, Navigator? Because I had a question about that. So, so I, I I did not plan on jumping into Navigator, but feel free to ask the question. So the question I get asked often, uh, both at the corporate level by leadership as well as by the teams, is the extent to which and the importance of sales navigator in this process by which we're developing um, our, our um, prospect list and we're developing our relationships and we're managing all these things in an impactful way, such as the way you're laying it out, because navigator adds so many amazing um, opportunities and devices and, and mechanisms by which we can do that in an automated way. And I guess my question to you isn't whether navigator is a good tool, because I think we've established that, but 
my question is, do you think from the perspective of a sales individual uh, undergoing and within their professional sales career, even if their company isn't necessarily as inclined to purchase and pay for a navigator, do you think the salesperson should? So that's a personal decision. Um, I, so I believe that Sales Navigator is the most powerful sales prospecting tool in the world for many, many reasons. Um, I caution an individual that they should not just buy it and try it out because there is a lot of hidden gem. There are a lot of hidden gems that get missed. I look at it as a, like a gym membership. How many of us join a gym membership? We show up a couple times. We're overwhelmed by the equipment, and then we just keep paying every month. But we're 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 intimidated to go back. If you decide on Sales Navigator. I highly recommend whether you take the training available at, with LinkedIn Learning or you work with someone like myself or someone else in the industry, you need a plan. Just like any, you know, you wouldn't start cold calling without a plan. You wouldn't send an email campaign out without a plan. Don't go to market with Sales Navigator without a plan. What 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 are your goals? Who you want to get that ideal prospect? And then once I've identified that, how am I engaging with them? Because what happens often when there's not like the full buy-in from a company where they're providing training from companies like us, there are many out there that are um, that can help, but. You know, that then there's like a process and a playbook and what do I do every day and what do I do when I see that a client switch jobs? This is great. What do I say? So there's so much value that if you are going to invest in the tool, make sure that you also invest in a plan to use that tool. Is that a fair statement? Excellent advice. And I, I couldn't agree more. Oh, I'm so glad we're on the same page. All right. So our next area is content of conversations. So we've identified all these people. How do we start conversations with them? Well, social selling content. This isn't all content. And I probably should put this on the slide because it's not all content. But social selling content. Content built to convert our connections to conversations. That's why we're here today. Needs to hit these five points. First, it needs to resonate. There's so much noise out there. When someone is scrolling down, they need to say, oh, um, maybe maybe you're selling into um, CROs and VP of sales. Great. Then they need to see their title. Sales leaders. Maybe you're selling to human resources. Human resource leaders. Because what do we, the very first thing we would stop a scroll is our own name. The second thing is our title. The third thing is our logo, right? So the, because we are completely self-absorbed human beings, we just are, right? Like when we're in social media scrolling mode or we're looking at our messages, we are making a decision and is this worth my time, right? Is it worth my time to read this? And so if we see, and that's why, you know, you want to use a name in every message. You want to use their name. It resonates like, oh, this is for me. But the title also goes, oh, this is for people like me. So we need to start with resonating, creating curiosity. First line, resonate and create curiosity in the first line. Five, um, five mistakes HR leaders make when... Um, creating uh, AI for their sales leadership team. Try to pull it together here, Thomas. <laughs> okay, no, but five, you know, five mistakes um, sales leaders make when trying to coach their sales team uh, from a, a typical recorded call. 
How about that? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Trying to get there. Right. And so you go, okay. Right. So you go, oh gosh, all of my coaching is from my 30 minute recording calls that I have to listen to the whole thing and find out, right. Whatever that is. That's how I'm coaching. Boy. Yeah. That's hard. So I'm going to teach them something new. So then this is where you go in and go, okay, here are all the things that we do. And then I reframe it as education, right? So consider, you know, an AI product that you consider leveraging the tech, not product, because that's his pitch. Consider leveraging AI technology to identify this area, this area, this area, this area, these coaching areas, right? So now they're like, oh, AI can do that. And then here's what this could look like, how much time this could save you, how much more accuracy this would be, how much faster the upskilling is once you have that, right? So now I'm thinking differently about what that looks like and then creating a compelling moment. And and I, you know, it, it could be if you've, um, this could be, you know, if you've uh, integrated AI into your sales process, put AI in chat, right? And now we start to identify who they are. And that's the compelling moment. But I can also have, you know, if you're exploring AI for your team, I'm happy to share insights. Here's a link to my calendar. That's also a compelling moment. So we want to encourage them with a call to action, so we move them from lurker to engager because we can't start the conversation unless they've engaged. They're invisible until they like, comment, connect with us, et cetera. We do know from corporate visions that 74% of buyers choose the sales rep that was first to add value and insight. Okay. It's not on price, guys. It's not on rate. It's on who's bringing value to the table. So generally, and there's so much more around this, but I'm just gonna give you a couple of ideas. If you've curated content, third-party content that's relevant, that leads back to your solution, not with your solution and not from a competitor, or you've curated a really good piece of content that your marketing has already created, that is educational, not pitch-based, I recently came across an article on ABC and I thought as a CEO in the XYZ industry, you might get some value from it. The most interesting insights I gleaned were DEF and GHI. If you're interested, let me know. I'd be happy to send you a link. Remember, we're still, these are our first degree connections. We could do this through a connection request, but we're like re-engaging those first degrees. Notice I don't send the link. We A-B tested this. We sent the link to 100 people and 19 clicked through. And then we had permission to name drop. Permission to name drop. I keep doing that. Permission to send the link. Permission to name drop is in a couple of slides ahead of, the, ahead of us. So um, permission to send the link. 59, no, sorry. 68 people asked for it. 59 people clicked through. It is a much higher response rate when we respect their inbox. So I know it's an extra step, but the, the success on it is absolutely outstanding. This is another one, and I set up a Google alert if you don't have Sales Navigator. So one of the great things about Sales Navigator is you can save accounts, and when content is shared about those accounts, it, we can search for it and it comes up in our news feed. Um, and so this is an amazing way to start a conversation because this is what's relevant to them or set up Google alerts for all of your prospects. I recently came across an article congratulating your company for the community service they did over the last few months and was quite impressed. I'm not sure if you had a chance to read it yet, as I often find CEOs can miss their impress. Either way, I thought I'd send it and say congratulations. You can send a link to their own content. Right? What does this do? I mean, this is huge. Now, I have connected with people. I've used InMail, which is a premium product where you can send a message to someone that you're not connected to. 
Sales Navigator is the primary place where that's available. There are some other premium products that offer a little bit of that. But the success on this is huge. And like, this is about them. They're like, oh my gosh, how amazing. This is not a new technique, my friends. I used to do this in the 90s. I would get the Philadelphia Business Journal and I would open it up and I'd see all these articles for, that the CEOs probably paid for. But at the time, I would cut it out really pretty and I'd fold up the article and I'd put a posty note or I'd put it in a nice handwritten note that says, congratulations on this. And I would build rapport through the U.S. Postal Service. And it would take a week before I would know they got it and I'd respond. This is instant now. We've got digital and we can do this at scale. And with a sales navigator or Google Alerts, every day you're getting content to do this with. Polls, another fabulous way to start a conversation. Put in a poll and ask people to engage. You can send any, any post that you put out. There's a little send button at the bottom and you can send it to 10 people blind copied at a time, asking them for their vote. People love to vote. They just do. And this goes into their inbox and they can vote right in their inbox. And now it's kind of discovery-ish, but it can help us start those conversations as well. And I'm a huge fan of send them a personalized video message from the LinkedIn mobile app. Oh, you could do voicemail, but I love video. You just hold it up and say, hey, friend, hope you're doing well. Now, you do have to be a first degree connection to someone, but this is a great welcome message to someone you're newly connected to. Right. Hey, I just wanted to pop in and say thanks for being a new connection. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to any content that you share. Uh, and please let me know if there's anything I can do to be a value to your network. Right. Maybe it's, hey, friend, thanks for connecting. Use their name. Don't say friend. Thanks for connecting with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not sure if you're exploring content around X, Y, and Z, but I do share a lot of that. And I recently came across a Brene Brown podcast on A, B, and C. Let me know if you're interested. I'm happy to send a link and do it in a video message. And they're like, yeah, sure. Right? It's just about starting that conversation. And then you could say, who do you, you know, I noticed you can go to their LinkedIn profile. I noticed you follow Brene Brown. Any, any other influencers or content that you enjoy? Right. Start a normal conversation. Say, hey, I don't know if you're exploring this or this, but we have a checklist specifically for sales leaders that that are our coaches that coach their team. If you're interested, let me know. I'll send that. Right. I did not jump into sending my stuff. So a lot of this is about slow down your outreach to speed up your outcome. It's not always a volume thing. It's not how much can I throw on the wall. It's just not. It's being purposeful and directed. And I mean, look, uh, honestly, a video message for me is faster than typing because I'm in sales and I'm a talker. So jump in, do that. People love to see your face. They just do. And it really humanizes it. All right, our last section referrals and permission to name drop. And while this is our shortest section, in my opinion, this is the, the reason why LinkedIn is the most powerful sales prospecting tool available to us today. Because we can leverage our second degree connections, right? So we talked about our first degree connections. It's two ways. We can message them almost unlimited. But they have a whole network of people that we have the opportunity to search and filter. So client referrals and networking introductions for anyone in sales will tell you this is the best lead source. These are the best opportunities. When I'm introduced from a client, I have an 80% success rate in getting to a first call. That's my number. If I'm introduced, if I have a first call with someone who is searching pro my products and services and it came through a referral, 
they don't shop. They're not looking at other solutions because they went to their trusted network and said, this is my challenge. Who should I talk to? So when you are coming in referred, you're coming in at a much higher level of credibility. Now, what we're about to do, they're not people that are actively searching our solutions. But remember, we want to come in early on in the buyer process, in the buyer journey. So if they're not looking now, we want to come in and give them a reason to have a conversation with us that's valuable to them. So we start with our networking partner. Reach out to your networking partner in this, you know, if you don't have any, ask your clients who their other trusted advisors are and get introductions into your client vendors because they'll become great networking partners. But if you don't have a good group of networking partners that are selling to the same client but are not competitors, you're missing a huge, huge opportunity. So networking partners, search each other's connections, review the list and whittle it down to a select few, exchange introduction paragraphs and make and receive introductions. I try to do this once a week with one networking partner. If you are in sales and you are not meeting with a networking partner at least once a week to make some introductions for one another, even if you have, you know, your first call is not actually making introductions, it's getting to know them, then the second call is, hey, I really like you, but I'm happy to make these introductions. You are really, really missing out on huge opportunities. And client referrals. Search their connections, make a list. Hey, Mr. Client, I'm so glad we've been able to help you do X, Y, and Z. I noticed you're connected to a few people I'd love to get in front of. Run the names by them and get referrals or even permission to name drop. Hey, when I reach out, can I tell them you said hello and that we've been working with you for the last three years? Okay, great. And go out and name drop. But client referrals, you're coming in at a high level of credibility. And again, you know, even if they are not actively seeking your solution, if you're bringing value to the table and you're having really, um, you know, whether or not we work together, here's what I'm going to bring to the table. Here's the value of a conversation. They're going to take it. And then when the time is right, the sales will happen. So that's me. I hope that this was valuable for you guys today. I'd love to hear in before comments. You, before you end on on that note, I would like to yeah. add a little bit to it and and just say that you know how excellent that 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 has been. But one of the things I think people right there where you were talking about um, leveraging that second uh, connection group, which is so incredibly important for us uh, in order to really create. Uh, and expand our network and, and get out of it what we wanted in the first place is that your second group of connections is only as good as your first group. You know, I like to tell people birds of a feather, right? Stick together. And and it's just, it's an old rule, um, but it's so true. And, and, you know, for every type of person or contact that you have that is perfect, Right. What you'll find is if you go in and look at all their second connections, you will find that most, if not all of their second connections are going to be very much like them. And those mm -hmm. are going to be more and more of the people that you want. Conversely, for those connections that aren't exactly what what is a good fit for your network, and you may have been accepting a lot of people coming into your network that you didn't really give too much thought about, but you wanted to get more and more people in your network. Well, when you go and you look at their second connections, you're going to find that they are not a good fit, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do when you're building your network, both first and second, is to make sure that you're bringing in the kinds of connections and relationships that are relevant for you and what you want to do by way of networking and building your relationships in LinkedIn. And when you do that, then the process by which Bryn just laid out in that using those second connections to really grow, drop names, get referrals, request connections, that is crazy impactful 
But when you don't, it's much more difficult and demanding on your time to make it work and you'll wonder why it doesn't. So that may be one of the one of the things you want to take a look at and make sure that you're keeping that network impactful. Well, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming. And I and I, and I apologize for the initial uh, kerfluffle there, as I mentioned. Um, for whatever reason, go figure, this morning the building network that I'm in collapsed and, and we were doing a few things to get ourselves back up and running. But here we are. You gave an amazing overview of how Thanks. important uh, LinkedIn is and, and, and how important it can be used. Furthermore, you've, you've more than showcased um, your uh, persuasive nature by way of helping people in using it. And here they can see how to reach out and, and work with you going forward. I would add to that um, that both you and I, as it happens, are speakers in an upcoming event. Yeah, on Gerhard. 25th through the 26th is a virtual trade show. And you and I are both speaking. We are um, um, with SOAR. Uh, we are highlighting and we are gold um, sponsors of the event. So we'll be talking more about what you were talking about earlier. And I certainly didn't want to parlay out of that, but I will now. And that was leveraging AI for the sales process. So there's many facets of what we've talked about today where AI, whether it be through LinkedIn or whether it be through Zoom or whether it be through many other solutions that are available, can impact and really improve not just your sales results, but your sales process. So sales isn't just about uh, how many sales did we get, but rather how much time, energy, uh, and, and effort did we need to put into doing that. And with AI, you can be much more productive and thereby get much more results and, and at a higher ratio with higher profits. And for an organization uh, with their sales teams, that's crazy important. So Bryn, you and I are both speaking at the Sales 3.0 conference, again, September 25th to 26th. I, mm -hmm. I recommend everybody take the opportunity, if they can, to register for that event um, and hear the amazing Bryn once again. I don't know, are you talking about the same uh, topic or are you elaborating further, Bryn? Yeah, we're talking about how to use AI to do a lot of what we talked about today. Nice. And in fact, that event, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, is the AI Sales Summit. And yes. it is all about AI. In fact, if anybody attends and they have the opportunity to do so, you're going to see, I don't know, probably a dozen new AI uh, sales solutions, some of which have been around for a little bit, others which are brand new. But you're going to get an opportunity to see how this all impacts the topic by which Bryn has been talking about um, so uh, so eloquently today. And I did to... put a I, I put a link in the comments under yeah. the um, the uh, today's event. That's the word event. So there is a <laughs> link in comments um, for for that summit. Thank you so much, Bryn, and I look forward to seeing you there as well, and and everybody else. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time. I hope you found it as interesting as I did. I've always wanted to do uh, an event with with you, Bryn, because I've watched so many. So today was 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 such a uh, a great opportunity to do that, and, and I thank you. I thank you too. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you, everybody. Have a great day, and until the next time. Bye bye.